Hi, I'm Darren Hand. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Universe coming to you from Heroes and Hobbies. On today's show, we have Nicole Little, writer, Krista Hogan and Sarah Beth Fitzpatrick from Soul Sisters. Come on back after this. And welcome back. I'd like to welcome to the show Nicole Little, writer. Thank you for having me. Nicole, tell us about your book. Um, okay, so the title is Roxy Buckles and the Flight of the Sparrow. Okay. Um, Roxy Buckles is a intergalactic bounty hunter. So she takes down space thugs and bad guys. Sometimes she goes to Earth and does the same thing, just trying to keep things lawful in the universe. Okay. Um, this particular novel is about uh, Roxy's desire to rectify an issue from her past. Um, there's the one that got away, the bad guy that got away. Okay. And so this book primarily focuses on her desire to track him down and bring him to justice. Where'd you get the inspiration for it? Uh, well, it originally started as a short story. Okay. Um, so uh, Engine Books, who published um, mm -hmm. my novel, yep. um, they do a From the Rock series, which has been a bestseller over the years. Sure. Um, this one was pulp science fiction from the rock. So I wrote a short story for um, that anthology, and it was published. Mm -hmm. But something about the characters that I wrote for the story, I just really loved them, and I wasn't ready to let them go. Yeah. So I was, you know, coming up with some different ideas, and I thought, I'm just going to get it down on paper and see where it goes. Now, your character, your main character, what's her name again? Roxy Buckles. Roxy Buckles. Where did we get the name to? Um, I'm not really sure where Roxy came from. It just okay. sort of popped into my head one day. Yeah. Uh, Buckles is actually after, um, so I have my friend Melissa, her mom's surname is Buckles. Mm -hmm. I just always really liked it. You like liked it was it. sounding yeah. really cool. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it just popped in my head one night, Roxy Buckles. Mm -hmm. I liked the way it sounded. Sure. I liked the way it looked when I wrote it down. So I was mm -hmm. like, that's it, that's the one. How old is Roxy? Um, so it never really comes out and says exactly how old she is, but she's probably around early to mid thirties. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what what time would this be based? Uh, ag again, it doesn't um, have a specific time because I didn't want to bog myself down in, you know, having to be specific about, mm -hmm. you know, in my second book when I write it. I sure. didn't want to have to go back and try to find different timelines. So I tried to stick with just in the Distant future. Distant future. Yep. It's just in the future a bit. Yes, a, a, a nice ways in the a, future. A nice ways in the future yep. where you can travel through space like we'd go for a drive in a car. Yes, exactly. And so the premise is that um, it's far enough in the future that when Earth got into trouble and couldn't, I guess, house everybody that was there, okay. they started to search and seek and try to find somewhere else where we could live. Right. Um, and then they managed to somehow split the sun so that we could create a new universe where humans could live and be safe and warm and mm -hmm. grow food. And that's where Roxy lives. But she can travel back and forth between the two different like solar systems. So <laughs> somebody split the sun into, and, and so now instead of our regular solar system, we've got another solar system with That's this correct, new, sun twin. New, sun twin. Yes. Sun twin. Yep. That is. Very good. Now, who did you say published your book? Engine Books. Okay. Um, they're a local publisher. Okay. Um, they've been around for a while now, but they uh, they used to publish, uh, like I said, they still publish these uh, From the Rock anthologies, yeah. um, but they also publish individual books uh, for local authors as well. Where can people find your books still? They can be found on Amazon. Okay. Um, and I know that uh, Engine Books has a table at the farmer's market every weekend, mm -hmm. and they always, always have copies of the book there as well. Good. So what's it like having a book on Amazon? If I went back a few <laughs> years in time and told you one day you'd have a book on Amazon, what would you say? I, I would probably laugh. I never, <laughs> never imagined that I would have a book published. It's... I know it sounds kind of weird to say it's a dream come true, but yeah. it, it, it was for me. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to write, even when I was like a little tiny kid. Yeah. I would like 
scribble on paper and then sure. you know like staple it together and yep. pass it out and be like oh this is my book so it's just something I've always wanted yeah. and you know never give up on it because no. you know I'm I'm almost 43 now mm -hmm. and it's taken me a long time to get to this stage but yeah you just can't give up on it you got to keep persevering in, so, in your dream what you want yeah, to do yeah definitely yeah. yeah any of Roxy in you oh god no, no, that, that's actually, <laughs> oh God, that's, no. That's actually the funny thing. Like Roxy is sort of like the exact opposite of me. Okay. She's tall. She's blonde. She speaks her mind. You know, she's not afraid to go and get what she wants. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, she's a bit of a, you know, badass. Um, so uh, definitely no. Oh, I guess yep. there's a little bit. The one, the one part is that she really likes to eat. She really I also it. like snacks. <laughs> I figured that would be a good way to get it in there. A little, little something. A little something of me, yeah. From you. Yeah. Now you you mentioned start uh, writing when you were small. Now you don't go from that to a book. <laughs> what have you written in between? Um, okay, so originally I just wrote short, short stories. Um, okay. Just because I really like short stories because there's not a lot of I guess like plotting or planning and you just get it straight down it's edited out and you can shop them around to a lot of different places um, people are sometimes surprised when they find out how many publishers accept short stories mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy writing horror um, and science fiction obviously yeah. um, so I started out just writing dystopian short stories um, mm -hmm. horror short stories and then shopping them out to small publishers Everywhere, I've I've had some short stories published um, with a publisher in Australia, okay. um, in the UK, and um, so in about I think it was around 2017, I started mm -hmm. to focus on actually putting myself out there. Yeah, not an easy thing to do. No. Um, so I had quite a few uh, short stories published. Uh, back in 2020, I wrote a novella with a group of other um, Atlantic Canadian authors in a shared universe. So same character. Uh, same ideas, but we all wrote different stories um, about different parts of her life, and so it's almost like once you, once I got to that point, mm -hmm. I wanted to I wanted more. I wanted my own book then. So okay, yeah. What exactly classifies something as a short story? Well, it's usually more than a hundred words. Okay. Anything that's around a hundred words, they usually call it a drabble, which I'm pretty sure they made up. A but drabble? Yeah. It's, okay. It's, it's a uh, writer speak, I guess, for a, a tiny little short story. So it's okay. like usually around 100 words. Gotcha. Um, but anywhere depends on who the publisher is. Mm -hmm. Some people will say the cap is 5,000 words. Some will say it's 1,500 words. Sometimes depends on the publisher and on the particular anthology because they have to fit as many as they can in, in that volume. Okay. So when back years ago, when you made your little books, who did you used to give them to? Uh, probably my grandparents. Grandparents. Um, my grandmother, Little, yeah. uh, her name was Susie. She was very supportive of mm -hmm. me um, being creative. Uh, she read a lot to me. She gave yep. me books. Mm -hmm. um, she encouraged whatever I wanted to do. So right. her and my grandfather, Little, uh, they were usually the ones that got the books and had to read them. Now, there yep. wasn't much to read, but they always pretended they were really good. <laughs> Well, Graham, Graham. they're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> I actually to. Um, actually dedicated my book to my grandmother because she was a really big influence in my life. Have she read the book? No, unfortunately, she died. Oh, in sorry, two, two so thousand, sorry. In, uh, in uh, quite a few years ago, almost twenty years ago now. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I, she would have been mortified to read it because there's some stuff in there that she just would have. She would have blushed. She, she would, would have blushed. Yeah. She would have made. She, she would have read it, but yeah. like on the sly, oh, and then never okay. told anybody about oh, it. Oh, <laughs> so Nan was a little. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Closet uh, Harlequin romance reader. Oh, was oh, she? Yes, but Very uh, good. or and like soap operas. If you came in and she was watching, once you turn it off. Oh gosh, there you go. Uh, so what's what's in the future for Roxy? Uh, well, I've already started writing book two. Okay. Um, so she's she's not gone away quite yet. Lots of adventure still to come. Can we can we get a few little little tidbits on book yeah, two? Yeah, sure. Um, so nobody knows the title yet, only okay. my family. So I will share that with you oh as my. a little treat. Okay. Uh, so the second book is going to be Roxy Buckles and the Cry of the Falcon. Okay. Um, Roxy is returning to her homestead from uh, a job that she's done when she catches a distress signal. 
Mm -hmm. um, but this distress signal is coming from a place where there shouldn't be a distress signal. It's just open space. Okay. And of course, because of who she is as a person, mm -hmm. she has to go check this out. Of course she does. And let's just say it doesn't work out real well for her. She should have not my, she, mind. She should have ignored it. <laughs> mind her own business. Yes, exactly. That is so cool. That is so cool. Who done your artwork for your cover? Um, okay, so that was done by a artist that was um, uh, contracted by Engine Books. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Sorry, I should know this, but I don't. Um, so um, they had her do up some uh, mock uh, covers, mm -hmm. and then they sent a bunch to me and had me pick out which um, which one I liked the best. Okay. They went back in and filled it in with the color and the name and the title and everything, mm -hmm. and there it was. As a writer, how much control do you have over the story, uh, or does the editor or publisher have any control over it? Well, once I wrote it, it went to the readers to see if it yeah. was, you know, if they were going to accept it for publishing. Sure. Um, once it was accepted, it went to the editor. Yeah. Um, now, ultimately, ultimately, it's up to me what goes in the book and the story itself. Sure. Um, editing for grammar and a spelling and things like that, sentence structure or mm -hmm. like um, the editor will make suggestions like maybe you should cut this bit or reword this here. Um, but they do leave, uh, the decision was left up to me. It's like, for example, my editor suggested that um, we change the last chapter and maybe keep that for a future book. Okay. And so I read through it again because you read through the book ad nauseum, like it's, you're sick of it by the end of it because you've read through your own book so many times. Oh, yes, yeah. And uh, I thought, you know, that is a really good idea. Yeah. Um, so while ultimately I didn't have to, mm -hmm. um, I felt that, yeah, that was a that was a good choice. So that's, I, choice. I, that's what I did. So uh, with the, with the cover now, back to that a bit. Uh, do you, did you have any input in the cover? Yeah. So what I did was uh, so the woman that designed the cover, mm -hmm. I sent her. <laughs> I was pretty particular about it, so I sent her descriptions of every character. Okay. Um, plus of the original idea I had, so like, you know, what their hair was like, what their clothes were like, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I took the extra step of sending her pictures of actors and actresses that I would have cast in the movie. Yeah, okay. If, you know, that were to be if it was an a option. Movie. And so then she could get an idea of what I had in my head yeah. um, when I was, you know, coming out with these characters. And, and then that's when they came back with the, uh, with, with the original designs that were you know, just sketches and stuff. Gotcha. She got a little bit of Marilyn Monroe look, yeah. sass sassiness to yeah, her Yeah, I like the idea of her being, um, like, I wanted her to be tall and blonde, but not like, you know, super skinny. I didn't want her to be like a Barbie kind of thing. No, that's Because right. she eats a lot, so I just wanted her to be like a normal person. Exactly. Um, but when they came back with this, this image, I was really excited about it. I love the cover so mm -hmm. much. Well, where can people find your book? Amazon. Yep. Um, and also at the farmer's market on the weekends, yep. Engine Books always has a table there and they always have copies available. That's where we can get them. Okay, yes. great. All right, well, thank you again for coming on the show today. Thank you for having and me. And we'll be right back after this. And welcome back. I'd like to welcome to the show Krista and Sarah Beth from Soul Sisters. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for having us. Tell us all about Soul Sisters. Gosh, where do we start? Where do we even start? <laughs> At the beginning, tell us, go right back, who came up with the idea and so, how you got started. So, um, I was already in a previous job, but heading towards a surgery that would mm, take me out of that job. And I sat down one day mm -hmm. over a coffee and I was scrolling through Facebook and I seen Sarah's online advertising for her tarot business. Okay. And I always wanted to open a store, so I just messaged her, I'm like, hey, and she's like, why is she messaging me? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, I got an idea. I want to get together for a coffee. And she said, sure. Mm -hmm. So we did, and we spit it out. Yeah. And, 
and here we are. Krista was actually my manager at one point at a previous job. <laughs> okay. So that's how we knew one another. Yeah. And I had had my tarot business for, I think it was about three years at that point. Right. And yeah, out and, of the blue. I, I love the, the, the herbs, the apocryphy, the healing that comes mm -hmm. with the earth. So I thought with what I could put in and what she already had to put in, what right. an amazing combination we could form yep. and make an ultimate healing store, mm -hmm. really. So we carry things that would heal you, whether it's herbs, roots, flowers from the earth. Our beautiful earth gives us everything we need. Mm -hmm. um, to crystals, to um, the tarot lesson, uh, the tarot sessions, which are okay. guidance and healing, and we're all about healing and making you feel number one. <laughs> Good. We need a lot of that this day and age. We do. That's the truth. Sage of the world. Yeah. <laughs> now, tarot. Tell us about tarot. So tarot, I've been doing tarot for about well, over 20 years. I started when I was 12. I'm, I'm 35 now. Um, and a lot of people, the biggest misconception is that tarot predicts the future. Okay. That's not what tarot is for. That's not what it's for. Tarot is for guidance. I have a friend of mine that actually calls me her tarot pissed because she comes in and she finds it so therapeutic, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and that's the thing. Like most people when they come in, they've got some sort of pressing issue or some little nagging problem that they, they have in their life and they mm -hmm. want guidance and sure. that's what I provide. It's an alternative method of healing for for mental illness and any kind of you know, any Even kind of if issue, you just really. want to, something to do, <laughs> it's a great way to spend the day. You're like, oh, yeah. wow, you just put so much of my life in perspective. Yeah. So how does, a, how does a session go? <laughs> so a session runs about a half an hour. Um, and I guess the client just comes in. We spend a bit of time conversing. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little bit of an unorthodox method for reading my cards. A lot of people usually use a certain layout. I don't. Um, I do tarot live sessions on Facebook on Tuesdays, Tuesday evenings. Okay. And if you do happen to catch those, you'll you'll notice me shuffling, and you'll get what's called jumper cards, and those are the cards that just kind of fly out of the deck, and those are the most Im important cards. That's that message that you need to hear. So I'll usually do a couple of jumper cards, get a good baseline for the reading, a little more conversing, and by the end of it all, they leave feeling at least 15 pounds lighter because all that sludge is gone. Then. <laughs> oh, okay. That is excellent. What other services do you offer? Krista reads bones. That's something that's really cool. It's very, very bones. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> all right. That's usually the we're, reaction that's we get. That's usually the reaction we're, we get. It's a divination, the same as tarot who, or, or. First it. of all, who owns the bones? They're my bones. <laughs> They're not my bones. Okay. <laughs> They're my bones. What kind of bones are they? They're all kinds of bones. They're bones that I've collected and gathered and acquired and not human bones. Not human bones. Not human bones. <laughs> okay, good. So we're 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 clear no, on that. No, there's no human okay. bones. Okay. All right. There, there is a penis bone. <laughs> okay. But you yes. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> uh, um, each bone yep. rep uh, that represents. Male, the male persona. Okay. Right? So each bone represents something different, and when you toss it, it falls in a certain spot, and okay. one bone lays against the other, and it kind of gives you a reading that way. It goes like, did you see Car Pirates of the Caribbean? Mm -hmm. Remember Calypso? She read his bones. Oh, yes. Yeah. Same form of divination. Old. Okay. <laughs> it's also known as osteomancy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's actually really, really cool to do. Yeah. How did you get into doing that? I actually stopped to... Um, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and then it's like, do I want to do that? Because you get this reaction, you read bones, and it's like, oh, okay, do I want to do it? So I was debating, and I stopped into a holistic store one day, and the lady that worked there said, I have a message for you. Awesome. What's your message? Do the bones? Not your typical everyday message. It's not a text no. you're going like, to get on your phone, right? She was like, this makes no right? sense to me, but do the bones. I said, it makes absolutely perfect sense to me. I've already started the collection. <laughs> so you just walked into this random store? Yeah. Well, and random. And it was just kind of, like you say, it's store. a metaphysical store. Metaphysical that's, that's store. That's nature's push. That's the universe's push to say, oh, yeah. do what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's like Tara's jumpers. Or nature's push. And you've never met this lady before, and you no. just walked in. She yeah. said, do the bones. Do the bones. Okay. <laughs> and how were you thinking about doing this before? Have, have, did just looking at different, like I said, it's it's all forms of divination. Mm -hmm. You know, there's many forms of divination that yep. that can be. And I didn't want to 
read cards that I had no desire to. It, that was her. That was her job. That was her thing. <laughs> that and was and her that's thing. the thing with divination too. The different. Um, types of things that you can get into not everybody is drawn to do certain things like i read my cards right but if i handed my tarot deck to krista she wouldn't know what to do with that no more than i would know what to do with her set of bones okay i was drawn to tarot right. and pendulum readings and things like that but she's more the bones i like i'll get krista to read my bones because i have no idea how to do it sure and i'll read her cards okay because i ain't going there <laughs> okay, so that's two of the services we got at the store. Yeah, what else yeah, do we do? Sure. We do, um, well, we have all kinds of apocryphy items. We are very into, like you said, healing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, herbs, uh, fruits, herbs, flowers. Fruits, flowers. We have almost 200 mm -hmm. different uh, apocryphy items in stock in our store, yeah. uh, which I think puts us the largest on the island. Maybe. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. We're so do you guys mix the stuff? We or? do. We actually we can, make yeah. keys uh, uh, for the most part. So like mm -hmm. if you came in and you said like my back is gone because of this, that, and this, we yeah. do you up a tea to help you make your back. Yeah. If you had high blood sugar, if you had high cholesterol, anxiety, you anxiety, depression, you can't sleep at night. There is a tea or an herbal remedy for everything. For everything. Um, Service-wise, we also do workshops. Yeah. Okay. We do workshops um, to help teach people uh, different ways of paganism, Wicca, that in that right. general scope of things. Um, Explain that a little bit more. That's interesting. The workshops? Yeah. So basically what happens in a workshop, uh, there's usually a theme such as like making teas or bath soaks or it can be based around one of the pagan holidays or... Sunday past we did Sunday. Bridget's Cross. Yeah. We, where they learned about Bridget and all her forms from Celtic to goddess to saint to yeah. hoodoo queen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. then we made Bridget's Crosses. Yeah. And this Sunday we're doing the lunar cycles yeah. and we'll be making a ritual lunar bath. So, yeah. so you have events at the store like that yep yeah, three times a month three times a month so yeah. who's Bridget Bridget is a goddess okay or a saint or a saint depends or on who you ask or a hating queen <laughs> it depends on who you ask yeah. okay but I'm sure you've heard of Saint Bridget with yep. the healing waters and this and that she yeah. crosses many different religions which is what makes her really cool yeah. <laughs> cool so where does where who do you get coming in for your services? Everybody. Everybody? Everybody. We've had people walk by. We actually just had a client uh, a little while ago who was driving past and stopped and pulled a U-turn in the road because she's like, I think I need to go in there. And then she ended up coming in and seeing me for a reading. Right. So it, it, it happens at random. It I happens mean, at random. There, there is a niche, of course, but it's it, it's... It caters to everybody, and we also have um, a tattoo artist on site who's part of a separate company. Mm -hmm. so, so we therapy. get a lot of her clientele as well, right? Sure, yeah. We're, we're all about healing, whether it's pain therapy or healing therapy, <laughs> but our girl Becky will hook you up if that's yeah. your damn. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, you mentioned your herbs and... What else do you guys, you said crystals and all this kind yeah. of stuff? Tarot crystals. decks, altar supplies. Yep. Yeah. Um, smudging supplies. Smudging supplies. Smudging is a big what thing is, that we do. What is smudging? Smudging is the cleansing of sm with smoke. So it's about restoring the balance of energy yep. in a room. So if you've got a room that's got too much negative energy, you don't want that. Nobody wants that. And negative energy, you walk in a room and you, and feel, you feel it. You it's feel heavy. something. It's that ick. It's, it's that, that I don't ick. feel like going in there kind of feeling. Yeah, you That's get that right. like the hairs in the back of the head. That's right. Come so, up. Okay. so when you burn it, uh, the negativity clings to the smoke. Okay. And then as the smoke leaves through your open door or open window, so does your negativity. So, and but as important as it is to remove the negativity, you should replace it with positivity. Exactly. So okay. you burn multiple things. <laughs> it's okay. not just always sage. It's not just always sage. Sometimes okay. it's sage and lavender because who wants? So, but you got to have a place like a window or a door for it. Always Absolutely. keep a window or door window open. open. Always. Otherwise, that negative energy is just bouncing around inside, driving That's you awesome. crazy. And where does the negative energy come from? It that could can, come from anywhere. Yeah, it could it come, come from, from anywhere. anywhere. If, you, or if you move into a new apartment, yep. for example. Sure. Somebody else was bound to live in that apartment before you. Yes. You don't know what happened. It could have been fight after fight after fight after yep. fight. You yep. don't want that to start your new, you know, yep. your right. new life. So yep. clear out all that energy and just restore the balance. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it could be even something so simple as you going to work one day and having a really, really bad day. Sure. And you bring that negative energy home. You want to get rid of that. You want to get rid of that. And that's one of the best ways to do that. Now your supplies net, are any of them obtained locally? 
a lot of our stuff is, is obtained locally. Yeah, oh, and, sure. and within Canada, um, for sure, Yeah, uh, the things that we can't source locally, yeah. some stuff we can't, obviously, but what we can, we do. And we do have some consignment items as well that... Um, are made by local uh, local artists like we have a great lady that does wood burning mm -hmm. um, we've got another the lady that does stuff. all kinds of herbal bath soaks yep. bath salts we have a blacksmith. candles the blacksmith out oh, in Grand right. Falls yeah, yeah. yeah. black steel forge yeah he's a yeah. fourth generation blacksmith oh yeah. that's and nice he's made yeah. some pretty cool weapons and stuff like yeah. that and, and we don't sell them as weapons we don't sell them as weapons <laughs> they're ritual, ritual tools <laughs> But you know, whatever gets it by. Yep. Yep. And we also, um, I'm, I'm gonna brag Krista up here, uh, we also do ritual apparel, um, which actually went over really well uh, when we were at the Renaissance Fair. Mm -hmm. um, she makes cloaks and dresses and stuff like that, and okay. they are pristine, they are beautiful. And they don't just sell to a certain niche, like we've had people that mm -hmm. don't practice any sort of like mm -hmm. paganism or anything like that buy them just because they really, really like them, and yeah. they're warm and cozy and beautiful. And my cloaks are made with fur. They're Ethically, so <laughs> ethically sourced for absolutely. Yeah, e what do you mean by that? Um, so no animal cruelty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Very important. Good. Now, if somebody wanted to find you, uh, what's the address for the store? Fifty-two Powell Drive in, in Carmere, and, and we're in Unit Three. You'll see the big sign. Okay. Yeah. We're on Facebook. We're on TikTok, yeah. and we're also on the World Wide Web. <laughs> and what's your address on the World Wide Web? www.soulsistersnl Dot com. Yeah. Very good. Well, ladies, thank you for coming in today. Thank, thank you for you. having us. And we'll be right back after this. And a big thank you to Nicole, Krista, and Sarah Beth for being on today's episode. And we'll see you next time. about this program, 